Good morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning. Receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. If you have your bulletin announcement sheet, I ask you to please take that out for a couple announcements here this morning. As you will see today, following the service today, we have a quarterly voters meeting. Uh, that'll be in the fellowship hall, and there's going to be snacks and food for that. So please stick around for the quarterly voters meeting. Uh, the rest of the week, we can see here on Wednesday, a brief mention, midweek divine service. You're, if you're out of town traveling on the weekends, uh, check out that service on Wednesday nights. Uh, it is basically the same service as today, uh, the services today, but with a different sermon. So it's uh, you don't miss the church calendar year by any means with that Wednesday service as well. As far as uh, next week, the, you can see some of the different details on the very back of your bulletin as well. Uh, brief mention also as well, the youth did a phenomenal job and the youth advisors did a phenomenal job on the float. I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but we were entering like 132 or something like that. Uh, they had a great time decorating the float, uh, handing out candy. We printed off 1,300 brochures that were handed out as well as there's a crew here making cotton candy and water and popcorn and so forth. So... Uh, great endeavor for everyone involved for that. So kudos to those involved in those parts of service. There's also in your bulletin, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a thing called the message in the pew. That is a message from our district. Those come out monthly just as a way to kind of keep you plugged into the different happenings in our North Dakota district as well. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed that need to be mentioned at this time? Well, today we are the eighth Sunday after Trinity, and we hear about false preachers, false prophets in all three of our readings today from Jeremiah, Acts, as well as the Gospel of Matthew. But why are those preachers worthless, and how do we respond as a church, and what's going on? We're going to hear more about that in the sermon here this morning as we contemplate specifically that text from Jeremiah, but also pulling from Acts and Matthew as well. But before we do so, our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 851, Hymn number 851.
ask the congregation to please stand as we turn to 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by the virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro, printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. We have thought on your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. As your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Be praised in the city of our God, his holy mountain, within her citadels. God has made himself known as a fortress. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. This is God, our God, forever and ever. He will guide us
us pray. Grant to us, Lord, the spirit to think and do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may be enabled by you to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the eighth Sunday after Trinity is from Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, and yet they prophesied. But if if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil ways and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the hearts of the prophets who prophesy lies? And who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? Who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What is straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 20. Paul said, For I do not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own cells will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert. Remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful most of all because of the word he had spoken, that they would not see his face again. And they accompanied him to the ship. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter.
Jesus said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This is the gospel of the Lord. With one heart and one voice, we confess the holy faith as expressed in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 744.
In the name of Jesus. Amen. There are really a lot of worthless pastors in America right now. You heard that correctly. Let me repeat it again. There are really a lot of worthless pastors in America right now. America's full of a bunch of pathetic, despicable, and useless pastors. Now, the reason why they are so worthless is not due to an element of incompetence. Their worthlessness is not because they lack organization or communication or interpersonal relationship skills. On the contrary, many pastors in America are indeed very professional. Many are organized, effective communicators and extremely personable and even very nice. However, they are still worthless. But why are they so worthless? And why such harsh words today towards those worthless pastors? Now, dear friends, it is because these worthless pastors do not, and this is the key, they do not listen to the word of God before they preach to their churches, before they preach to the sheep. In our reading from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, we hear about worthless and false preachers. All their babble is nothing more than hot air and lies to boot. The reason being, quite frankly, they make it all up. Yes, they make it all up. Not a word that they speak comes from God. These worthless and false preachers have closed ears to God's word. And so if a preacher preacher's ears, if a preacher's ears are closed to God's word, then everything he says is nothing more than cotton candy silliness. Indeed, if a preacher has his ears closed to God's word, no matter how charismatic, no matter how professional and competent and entertaining that pastor is, well, that preacher is on the same level as a librarian reading fantasy, fantasy stories to children. This is why the Lutheran Church of Missouri Senate is so particular and demanding of our pastors. We don't ordain our pastors online and then give them a pastor kit for $19.99. But instead, we send our pastors, seminarians to be precise, off to seminary for four years to learn the original languages of the Bible and to study the Bible diligently. Yes, diligently. Now, this is not just a silly academic exercise intended to puff the pastor's future ego up. Look at how smart your pastor is. But instead, it is intended to get the pastor, to get pastors as close to the Word of God, close to the Bible as possible, to study it, to be diligent, and even to study it in the original languages, so that the pastor might be entirely captive to the Word of God and not the opinions of man. Think of it this way. The pastor must be marinated. Yes, marinated in the word of God before he preaches to his flock. And so what this means is that each and every one of you here this morning, you should expect your pastors to diligently study God's word, even in the original languages and within its historical context, before he dares step into this pulpit and preach. And you should expect the pastor to preach off the selected scripture passages for each day of the church calendar. Congregations and Christians should want their pastors to be as close to the word as possible. You should never expect the pastor to just step in the pulpit and wing it, if you will. There's no such thing as an innovative and creative sermon. The pastor should never step in the pulpit and do a new thing, for God has indeed not spoken a new thing, but he has spoken what is And everything that we need to know is already contained in the Word of God. Now, we should mark and note that there is nothing wrong with a pastor having a good communication skills or organization, interpersonal relationship skills. You as the church, indeed, should be fine with that. But you must demand, you must demand that your pastors cling to the Word of God as first importance. The sermons and the teachings of the church through the pastor must originate from God's holy word. For if they do not, and this is the point, if they do not, it is all vain, all is empty. Everything is worthless. If it's not from the word of God, we might as well shut the doors and vanquish and leave the church. You as a church should expect that the pastor's main calling is to be faithful and not necessarily successful 
If given a choice, you should demand 30 years of boring preaching, but faithful preaching of the gospel versus 30 years of entertaining, 30 years of entertaining heretical preaching. But there's another problem, though. Unfortunately, there's another problem that needs to be addressed this morning. There are also many careless parishioners in America right now, too. You heard that correctly. America is full of a bunch of obtuse and sleepy and neglectful parishioners. Now, the reason why these parishioners are so careless is not due to a lack of empathy. Their carelessness is not because they lack kindness or love or gentleness. On the contrary, many of these parishioners are indeed very kind, very loving, and gentle people. However, they are still careless. But why are they so careless? And why, again, such harsh words? Dear friends, these careless parishioners, they have no stomach for the solid teaching of the word, but only desire spiritual junk food. All they want, as we could say, is easy street. They are more concerned with what makes their bellies happy and their wildest dreams come true than hearing what God has to say in his word. Bluntly stated, they have no taste for God and are set in their own ways. As the Apostle Paul says on this very subject, he says this, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have tickling or itching ears. They will accumulate, they will gather for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, to tell them what they want to hear. Now in America, we hear a lot of lament in America these days about how youth have forsaken the church. It's how youth have forsaken the church. Well, there are many reasons that contribute to this phenomenon. I believe an older theologian has really pinpointed the problem. Permit me an opportunity to paraphrase this theologian from 1978, speaking to this issue. He says this, When youth do not listen to the truth but go looking for what they want to hear, the main problem is not with the youth but with their elders. If youth are confused, it is mainly because of their parents. For example, if the liturgy is boring to children, it is usually because the parents, well, they do not find it interesting as well. If children saw adults going to receive the word and sacrament as the most important activity of their entire lives, well, the youth would respect it too and would never dream of treating it like a pop event to be tinkered with by every Tom, Dick, and Harry. A church that has parents captive to the word of God, particularly fathers, will generally have the devotion of their children too. But a church that surrenders to the appetites of the gut and the will of the stubborn heart neither deserves God's word nor the presence of youth. That is for sure. No wonder why it is so common to see worthless pastors and careless parishioners together They're actually two peas in a pod, as they say. Careless parishioners who rebel and despise God's word, they're happy to hear worthless pastors say, hey, hey, don't worry, all is well, it's all good. And worthless pastors who like being in positions of power and authority, the accolades of mankind, they're equally glad when parishioners live the way that they want to, for it is easy to say to these kind of parishioners, Don't worry, nothing bad will ever happen to you. It's all good. But what does this mean for us here? I mean, that really boils it it down. What do these sobering words mean to you and me right here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church? Quite frankly, my friends, we could say this. We're in this together. We are. Today's reading from the Old Testament and gospel are not only a warning to Pastor Roth and myself, But they're a warning to you, too, as well. They're sobering words, words that grab our attention. We're in this together. The Lord is against smooth-tongued pastors who make up their own messages and drift away from the word of God itself. And the Lord God is also against parishioners who follow their own hearts and plug their ears to his word, going after the gut and what appeases the emotions rather than truth. And so it appears today that you and me, we must repent together. We must repent of the times that we have failed in these areas where 
We have indeed fallen short, for there is much that we have to repent of. But we also together, this day, must drop to our knees. I must drop to my knees. And cry out for mercy, protection, and discernment. Lord God, help me. Lord God, help you. May we ever be captive to the word of God. And so, baptized saints, pray for your pastors. Pray for your pastors. Pray for Pastor Roth and myself that we would be faithful to God's word when times are good and when times are bad. Pray for your pastors. Pray for us that we would not turn our back on truth or be tempted to tickle your ears with what you want to hear, but to be faithful regardless if there is five people in the pews or 500, that we would be faithful in season and out of season. We would be faithful whether there is two bucks in the plate or a thousand bucks in the plate, that we'd be faithful in good times and in bad, faithful to the word. And I will pray for you too. I know Pastor Roth will pray for you as well, that the Lord would actually grant you zeal. Hear this out, zeal for the truth discernment to identify falsehoods, and the integrity, again, the integrity to hold this pulpit and your pastors accountable to the faithful confession of God's word and nothing else. That's God's word and God's word alone. And together, let us pray together boldly. Let us stand and pray boldly together against the devil and his lies. Pray against the ideologies of the world that are here today and gone tomorrow. Pray against the trickery of our old sinful natures that would all attempt to steal us away from God's word. May we all receive from the altar of grace. Yes, this altar, grace upon grace, forgiveness, life, and salvation. May we all be captive to the word of God, marinating in that word of God. And finally, let Paul's blessing then be upon us together to hear Paul's words to you and to me. Paul says this, And now I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all that are sanctified. Grant this, God, unto us all, In the name of Jesus, our good shepherd, we pray. Amen. Ask the congregation to please stand for the offertory. Maybe see it for the offering music as a way to remind the offering plate is at the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be mailed into the church office or conducted through the church website online. Congregation, please stand for the prayers of the church. (coughs) 
O God, you have brought us, your people, into the city and holy mountain of your church, rejoicing in your judgments and promises. We come before you boldly with our petitions through the merits and mediation of Christ, our righteousness who sits at your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, in holy baptism, you adopted us in him and gave us your spirit. Keep us in our baptism. Bring it to our remembrance every day. Let it be for us a constant source of comfort and confidence in times of suffering with hope for the eternal inheritance you prepared for us in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. God of all nations, direct and defend all who make and minister and judge our laws. Bless and protect our soldiers, police, and all those who work to keep our communities safe. Keep us all from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Teach us to grow in virtue and lives in peace with everyone. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you are a fortress to your people. In your temple, we think on your steadfast love in Christ. Hear us on behalf of all who need healing, strength, and comfort. We pray especially this day for Ashley and Brian. Carl, Charlotte, Connie, David, Dean, David, George, Gloria, James, Jeff, Joellen, Marilyn, Darlene, Philip, Randy, Rita, Robert, Ruth, Sharon, Ruth, Sue, Suzanne, as well as Amber Emerson and her family as they mourn the loss of Grandma Jo. Defend them from the attacks of the evil one and cause them to join in your praise. Lord, in your mercy. God of truth, protect your flock from the wolves that seek to mislead and devour the sheep through their false teaching. Grant us discernment to test them against your word and so recognize false prophets by their bad fruit. Preserve your church in the pure doctrine of your word that the good fruit of salvation would be offered to all who hear and believe. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we continue to the service of the sacrament on 194, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Center, we do still invite you to please come forward, kneel at the rail, and cross your arms to receive a blessing this day. And if you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, our Lord and trusting in his promises we are bold to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread 
And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
congregation to please stand for the Nugna Menace. thanks unto the Lord for he is good let us pray we give thanks to you almighty God that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Maybe we see it for our departing hymn, hymn number 680.
So why the harsh words? Well, the harsh words are simply this. We are people of the word. As sheep of Jesus, we feed, we feast, we live by his word, captive always. Receive the word continually. Hear that good gospel often that you're forgiven of all of your sins. And so rest as one of his sheep. Before we depart here today, let us uh, have a common table prayer and return thanks for the meal that we'll be following before our voters' assembly. So let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Have a good week. Thank you.